right what's going on everybody welcome back today we're going to be going over a melee focus build and short disclaimer before we even get into this this build is slightly complicated but really the only thing holding it back is getting the mods to drop in the right slot which is you know any build but for this specific build you're going to need some very specific mods and very specific slots so it's kind of annoying to make but you know you might have the armor already inside of your uh side of your stash or whatever but you also need a specific weapon mod combo so i'm gonna go over that and i'm also gonna go over the actual armors that i would suggest chasing because they come with the mods that you need on at least one mod slot in that specific piece and then you got to get lucky with the third slot and then you can reroll the second slot so i'm gonna share those with you guys to make it a little bit easier and if you want to see the build in full action uh uncut i'm gonna put a link up top so you can just watch that if you want to see what it can do other than that let's get into it all right now first things first let's go over the actual weapons that we're gonna need our weapon mods per se and that's gonna be the anomaly enhancement mod you're gonna need that in one slot and you're gonna need the death renown mod in another slot even though we're not using the weapons just having these in hand is gonna give us the benefits so you just need to make sure you got a weapon with both of those mods on it and the evening star rolls with death renown that's where it comes from but what i'm using here is a charred lance that rolled with anomaly enhancement in the third slot which uh, any gun can do that and then you can just roll death renown on it like i did here so as long as you get anomaly enhancement in the third slot you can roll death renown and you'll be good to go now as for the actual mods the death renome and the anomaly enhancement i'm kind of taking it slow here because it gets kind of confusing how this work with the armor but death renome this is pretty simple it gives you a firepower boost if you have two skills on cooldown and anomaly power boost if you only have one skill on cooldown now we're only using one skill that's the uh, fixing wave that's to give us you know a heal and to cleanse us of debuffs so we're always going to be getting that anomaly power boost as long as we have this weapon out and then anomaly enhancement is going to give us a firepower boost equal to 40 percent of our anomaly power i know we're not shooting our guns in this build but we actually need firepower to do damage with one of our other skills so we need this these two things together are kind of busted i don't know if they're intended to work this way but it's pretty cool i like it and with that being said let's move on to the armor so i can explain how this works now like i said earlier we're going to be using a specific set of armor because getting this to drop in all the slots it's just way too much rng but but you can cut out some of the rng because some of these pieces roll with the exact mods we need and we also got kind of lucky because we're using three piece flame leper we're using the boots the gloves and the legs they all have mods that we need and then we're using two piece of the martyr set and that's of course is going to be the helmet and the chest piece now looking at the helmet we got untamed power rolls on there every single time so you can just reroll the first slot to another mod Right here, I got shock and awe. And what this does is every time you get hit with a melee attack, uh, you throw out lightning that does four million damage, has an eight second cooldown. Uh, that's just there to, you know, help you get some ads off of you. And then we rolled anomaly echo in the third slot, which is pretty helpful for the build. I kind of wish it was euthanizer because we're going to be doing like a lot of toxic damage. But like I said earlier, you just got to get super lucky with these drops. I kind of wish you could reroll the third slot sometimes, but you know, it is what it is. Now for the actual mods on the chest piece, we have self-medication. This comes on the chest piece by default, so that's pretty good. This is uh, really helpful for the build to keep you alive. And what this does is it increases your max health by 20% every time a skill goes on cooldown. And even though we're only using one skill, it's going to be coming off a of cooldown almost instantly. So this is super helpful and you're pretty much going to have 60 percent more health at 75 80 percent of the time now the next skill magma shelter is one of the stars of the actual build because this thing does a lot of damage there's no cooldown and this is the reason that we want all the firepower we can get now at base this adds an extra 1.4 million damage to your melee attack but once you start you know activating your skills that's going to jump up to like 2.5 million i believe and this has no cooldown, so you're gonna be able to spam as quick as you can throw melee attacks, you can, you know, do an extra 2.5 million damage. So this is really good. And then we have Cleansing Wind inside the third slot. This is pretty good. This is gonna keep all the debuffs off of us. And it's pretty much gonna have a close to 100% uptime because we're gonna be getting this back almost instantly, depending on how many enemies we're fighting. So this is really good. Now moving on to the legs. We got the Flame Leper legs, of course. It's got virulent Compound. You deal 10% more damage to elites affected by Toxic or Blightfire. 
We are gonna have access to Blightfire here since we're using the three piece of this, which is which is super helpful. Uh, just adds more damage on top. And then I rolled Concussive Force in the second slot. This makes your melee damage do 25% more damage and a 50% bigger range. This is super helpful for ad clear, so thumbs up for the build. And then we got lucky, we rolled Shatter in the third slot. This is actually not the worst thing to have there because we're gonna be freezing a lot with our melee attack, so this is really good. Now moving on to the gloves, we're using the Flame Leopard gloves and I'm trying not to go down the rabbit hole too fast right here because the gloves come with license to heal on them, which gives you a 10% weapon damage boost, which goes hand in hand with the magma shelter on your chest piece because magma shelter scales off of firepower. I don't know why they made it that way, but it does. And also, again, has no cooldown. So you can spam that as much as you want to. And that's gonna take us into uh, the second mod slot, which I rolled martial arts in there. So that decreases your melee cooldown by 50%. So you can attack more, attack quicker, it's really good. And then we got Radical Therapy in the third slot. This is not bad. I wish it was Euthanizer there, but Radical Therapy works. And all this goes hand in hand with the skill tree and the pack tree, which I haven't even gotten to yet. And it's kind of weird looking, but uh, so all these things just start stacking up. The gloves, the, the gun that we're using, the anomaly enhancement, the death renome, all of that stuff stacks with the chest piece or wherever you have magma shelter on and you do a lot of damage so moving on to the boots uh we're using flame leopard boots bad medicine rolls inside of the first slot and i know this is a melee build but bad medicine i couldn't get this build to work without bad medicine and it only does twenty three thousand damage so i guess technically it's not a full melee build but it helps me proc toxic which helps me proc light fire quicker so it's pretty good and this is killing me because i really miss my phantom dash but you gotta do what you gotta do for damage and then we got Thunder's Legacy here, which is you get charged with Anomaly Lightning every eight seconds and that lashes out towards three enemies within 10 meters. So that's pretty good. That's a lot of damage and you don't have to think about it. In the third slot, we rolled Emergency Stance. So this is good for survivability. Uh, I don't know what else I would put here, but you could do without this. Maybe something like Tremor, that would be good too. Cause that's like more constant damage that you don't you know, have to think about. And I swear we're almost done. We're gonna move on to the actual skills we're gonna be using. And although we have three skills equipped, we're only gonna be using Fixing Wave. So Fixing Wave is pretty much our heal. It's our way to activate Blightfire like more easily. Sure, it does like a little bit of damage, like 20,000, but it's mostly here to keep us alive and to proc Blightfire, that's about it. So in the other two slots, you can put whatever here because we're not using them. I mean, of course you can use them if you want to, like in your own build, but you're gonna lose some of that anomaly power. But if you want to, you can. So moving on to the class tree, it looks a little bit funky, but everything is where it has to be. We're gonna go bottom tree first. We're gonna pick up the anomaly power. We're gonna pick up brain freeze. This is gonna make us apply toxic every time we hit something with a melee attack. We need that for blight fire. We're gonna pick up these other anomaly nodes at the bottom. Then we're gonna go up, we're gonna pick up Wipeout, we need that. Fracture for more freeze damage. We're also gonna pick the Skill Leech perk instead of the cooldown because Skill Leech is gonna give us more anomaly power from the Pax tree. And then we're just gonna go all the way down and pick up Overclocked. Now Overclocked is a godsend for this build because it gives you an extra life in case you die. And also, whenever you activate Fixing Wave, you're gonna get 40% weapon damage and 40% anomaly damage. And that goes hand in hand with the weapons that we're using that has Death Renome and Anomaly Enhancement in there. So pretty much whenever you pop your Fixing Wave, you're gonna be proccing this, you're gonna be proccing your gun, you're gonna be proccing your gloves, and all that is gonna siphon into your chest piece or whatever piece you have Magma Shelter on. So you're gonna be doing a lot of damage and it's beautiful to see i love it and if you want to pause and just check out the nodes on the tree feel free to do that but we're going to move on to the pax points now on the actual pax tree it's usually pretty beneficial to go all the way to the end on some of these trees but we're not doing that with this one so on the top tree we're going to pick up the first node initial striker whenever we use a skill we're going to get 10 percent more anomaly power and firepower so this stacks with all the, with everything else so you're going to get a big bump to firepower and anomaly power which all siphons into the same tree and then we're going to go bottom tree you're going to pick up the undying every five percent of your missing health increases your weapon leech and skill leech 
This is super helpful because the more skill leads you have, the more your anomaly power is going to go up. So the lower your health get, the stronger you're going to get. Because in the next node, Override, you get anomaly power increased by 100% of your skill leech. And right now I have 44%, but you know, as you continue to fight, you lose health, you know, your skill leech goes up and you can't really see where this goes to right, like in the middle of battle, but I'm just assuming that it has some effect. And then we're gonna pick up Apothecary. You pulse every five seconds, healing a player within 25 meters. This counts you as well for 2% of all damage done between each pulse. So every five seconds, you're pretty much gonna get a full heal as long as you're fighting. And the next perk, this pretty much wraps everything together. This allows you to spam all your abilities and that's Hastened Influence. Remaining cooldown of one of your skills is reduced by one second for every status removed by you or applied to an enemy. So pretty much as long as you're fighting, you're gonna be off of cooldown. This has no cooldown. You could use your skill and this can proc multiple times if you're fighting multiple enemies. So this is super helpful and this keeps you alive, keeps your ability off cooldown, especially since you're only using one ability that's already on a short cooldown, you're golden. And you most definitely can use cold snap in this build. I just didn't want to. I wanted to, you know, punch things and the cold snap seems like a little cheesy cause like they're frozen, they can't fight back. I like being like, you know, mobbed on and just like seeing everything just like disintegrate. So you can also use cold snap. You can use whatever abilities you want to. It doesn't have to be fix and wave. So take this build, shape it however you want to, plug in, you know, whatever other build you could think of. Cause this setup could definitely be converted into a cold snap build which would be equally as disgusting but we'll get to that in another video and with that being said that's all i got for you guys today hope you guys enjoyed the build hope you guys enjoyed the video hope i explained everything enough if not if you confuse anything let me know in the comments i'll try to help you out and i will be streaming here in a little bit maybe this weekend i'm not entirely sure but uh, yeah, if you enjoyed the video, want to come back, leave a like, subscribe, all that shenanigans. My name is Alex. Peace.